Today's video has been highly requested. We're going to be using Kittle to make business cards using multiple artboards and then uploading them to Vistaprint. I'm gonna show you the whole process, how to get the template from Vistaprint with all of the guidelines, how to upload that template to Kittle and work with it and design around it, and how to export your project from Kittle and get it back into Vistaprint to order your business cards. Obviously, you can use any print provider you like. We're just going to be using Vistaprint in this video. So let's get into it. So on Vistaprint's website, we're going to click on business cards and go to Matt. Scroll down until we see this specs and templates option. And then we're going to see this SVG download. Click that to get your template. Okay, guys. So for this business card, I've got this canvas right here. This is a 3.61 by 2.11 canvas and this is going to be what Vistaprint recommends to upload that goes along with their guide. I'm just going to click up here and change this to front so I have this layer labeled. Next this is just the template that Vistaprint offers right here and I'm just going to make sure that this is the same size as the canvas and get this centered up. Now this green line is the essentially the extent of what they consider to be safe. The blue line is going to be their cut line and then the red line is like just no go, like do not put anything here. Now what I can do is I can go into my layers panel, drop down this artboard and this is our illustration right here. I can label this guide to keep myself uh, nice and organized and then I can lock this so it just doesn't get in the way while I'm designing. That find that super helpful. In fact, I'm going to take the opacity of this and put it at 20, and that way we can turn it off and on when we're checking our design. But for right now, I'm going to leave it off and lock it. I'm gonna choose my background color right here, and then I'm going to go for just a nice kind of off-white color, just like this. And then in my elements panel, I'm going to go into basic shapes, and I'm gonna find this like gradient orb thing. I'm gonna size this up and place this in the center of the canvas. And then here is where the magic happens right here. So I'm gonna take this color on the right and I'm gonna find kind of a pinkish reddish color, maybe a little bit more towards red, something like this looks nice. And then this color right here, I'm going to change to the background color of the artboard. That way it fades into the background color and not into black, which creates this kind of weird thing that we probably don't want. I don't, wouldn't assume that you would want that. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're going to switch these colors. And this is going to allow us to create this nice kind of hazy gradient orb. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and just bring it a little bit towards the center, maybe halfway towards the center just to get some nice definition of that color in the middle. Then I'm gonna hit T to add some text and size this down. And then I think that I'm going to use Playfair display for this. I like Playfair most when the letter spacing is condensed a little bit. So I'm gonna go like negative 80, something like that looks good to me. And then I'm gonna put something like hello. Obviously you can make this text whatever you want and I'm going to size this up because I want this to be pretty eye catching on the card. Now, if I want to check if I'm good, I can bring up this guide and I can see that I have a bit of space left to go. If my goal is to, to cover as much of the business card as possible, I have a bit of space left to, to make this bigger. So I can now turn my guide off and I think I'm content with this as the front of my card. So this is my finished front of the business card. Well, obviously we need a back of, an, of a business card. We need to have our name on it. We need to have our information, all the basic things. So I'm gonna hold option and drag this artboard over. And then I'm going to double click this and name it back. We wanna be organized and make sure everything is nice and tidy. I'm gonna get rid of this, click T for a new text box and just size this down quite a bit in preparation for a bunch of information that's gonna go on the back of this. For this font, I'm gonna use something nice and tidy like Familigen Grotesque or Bricklage Grotesque might look nice. Let's do Familigen. Yeah, I like that better. And same thing, I'm going to close the letter spacing on this, going to left align this, 
and then bring my text box bracket in so that when I type, if it gets to the end here, it comes down here versus it spanning out past the artboard. So I might put something trivial in here for right now, but I could say my name is Graham Wilson and I'm a graphic designer from Raleigh, North Carolina. I might make the font smaller and close that line height quite a bit to make it nice and compact. So I like something like this, size it up just a little bit. And I want something to emphasize my name here, so I'm just gonna put an asterisk there. It doesn't really do anything, it's just more of a design element. And the next thing I'm going to do is copy and paste this block down here. It's already starting to look kinda cool. I mean, if I didn't need to have any information on it, I would totally leave it like this. Just looks nice. But obviously we need some information on here. So I'm gonna put like a fake num number on here, like. 555, obviously all fake numbers start with 555, and then enter, and then we could do something like my email at gmail.com, and then we could say like my website is cool.com. So this is already looking pretty nice and full. If I check my guides, I can make sure that all of my text is still well within the guides here. So none of this will be trimmed off and we shouldn't have any issues with printing. So I can turn my guide off. I wanna add something right here. So I might go over here and grab this circle, stretch it out into an oval, place it right here in this spot, kind of nestle it right there. I might actually stretch it out a little bit more so it fills more of that space. And then I'm going to turn off the fill color and I'm going to add a border weight to this just to make it like an outlined circle. Somewhere around there looks good at 0.70. And I feel like I wanna put some text in this. So I might copy and paste this and say something like, hey, there, and then center this, close my text box, and then make sure that this roughly matches the rotation of the oval. I might close the line height on this a little bit more, something like negative 20, and just make sure that the tilt looks about the same as the oval. Just for fun, I wanna see what the fill color looks like if we turn that on, and then we send this, we could send this to the front. That actually looks pretty cool, like this, how it's kind of going over this shape. We could even add a shadow to this that is that pinkish color. And now this is super cool. It's like this orb in the middle, but it's, it's bleeding into this shadow on this oval right here gives it a lot of like kind of fake depth. I'm almost wondering if I click this and I do the same thing and add a shadow to this. I don't like that as much as I thought I would. So this is pretty awesome, it, especially for just a couple of minutes. So next what we're going to do is we're gonna go to our download section right here. We're going to make sure that our download size matches our canvas size right here. So we want this to say 3.61 by 2.11 and then this is critical. We need to make sure that our DPI is at 300 DPI. This basically means 300 pixels per inch or 300 dots per inch. So basically standard print is always going to be 300 DPI. Anything other than that, you're gonna risk based on the scale and how close somebody is going to hold it, you're going to risk your project looking blurry when printed. So we want to make sure that it is 300 DPI and then we're going to download this design. And actually after doing this with Familigen over here, I'm wondering what it would look like with Familigen over here as well. And I think I might actually like this better. Obviously you can use whatever fonts you want. You are not held to using the fonts in this video use whatever you think looks awesome. And I think that the Familigen regular italic font looks pretty good. And it's just, it's eye-catching to me. It's different. It's a little offbeat. It's a little quirky. So this is something that I would definitely use. And that, that's, that's, the, that's the point, right? You want to make sure that whatever you're using kind of encompasses the vibe of your brand or your business. You want it to match and you want it to feel like you. Another thing that we want to note is having correct spelling. So I'm going to go right here and I'm going to change this to from to make sure that our spelling is correct. It is a lot easier than you think to misspell things and then just not catch them before you print them. So I would 100% recommend 
proofreading everything that you design before you download it and upload it to Vistaprint. So now that that's done, we're going to do just that. We're going to download this and we're going to upload it to Vistaprint. So now that we're on Vistaprint's website, we're going to scroll down a little bit and go to get standard right here. We don't want to do any of these other things. We want to do this right here, which is upload your own design. We're going to go ahead and select this. We're going to start with the front and then we can go to the back right here, upload your design and upload the back as well. And now that we have the front and the back in here, we can do something awesome, which is go to next. I've reviewed and I approved my design continue and what this is going to do is it's going to give us this awesome front and back animation just to give a little 3d bring it to life kind of element to our business card sometimes when you finish a design it doesn't look the best just on the canvas but you might be pleased with it go ahead download it upload it and see it in this kind of context and you may be convinced that you are done and you're ready to print because it looks so awesome when it's brought to life a little bit. Once you've done that, you can choose all of your other things like your paper thickness, your uh, your finish, which is could be like matte or glossy or uncoated, and then rounded or standard corners, and then continue on with your business card purchase. This one was super fun to make. Please let me know in the comments if you want me to do more business card designs, maybe in different design styles. I think that would be awesome. They're super fun with just a front and a back using Kittle's multiple artboards. They're a lot of fun to make. If you haven't used Kittle yet, we have a promo code for you in the description to get a percentage off a pro plan. And if you don't want to worry about all of that right now, you can also just try Kittle today for free. Let me know if this tutorial was helpful in the comments. Drop a like and feel free to subscribe and stick around for a while. Well, that's it for this video and we will see you in the next one.